coordinated fight back, which would obliterate the hate group. Dr. Avzai Ashraf said ISIS has become its own worst enemy with its campaign of terror against the West, which has prompted an international backlash. Well, you hear about the U.S.-led coalition has done nothing. What airstrikes? Nothing. The airstrikes are garbage. It's like Bill Clinton bombing an aspirin factory during the old Gaddafi days. Why, why, the barbarity, it didn't stop it. Dr. Ashraf said that another atrocity on the scale of this summer's Tunisia Beach massacre could result in boots on the ground and an end to ISIS's evil grip on power. No kidding. If we had a real president, they wouldn't even be in existence, for God's sakes. A man won't even say Islamic and terrorism in the same breath. How can you fight a war if you don't identify the enemy? Everyone knows that. Even Cameron had to chastise this clown uh, at the UN last week. That's all. So that's a little of the headline on the Savage Nation. Many other things. Here's from the New York Post. How seven years of Obama brought the world from kumbaya to chaos. That's true. New York City police ignore Muslim Brotherhood assault on the streets of New York. Really? Didn't know that. I didn't know the Muslim Brotherhood was operating on the streets of New York and in uh, the government itself. Wouldn't have known that. How do you like that? No wonder John McCain is such a useful tool. Well, anyway, those are some of the headlines, and we'll talk about the election in a minute. Like, why is Bernie Sanders surging? He's going to go nowhere. You know, it's populist rhetoric, you know, screw the rich, get Wall Street, blah, 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 blah. You know, it'll go nowhere. That kind of stuff plays with the college crowd, the freakazoid crowd, you know, the loser crowd. Bernie, Bernie's going to really straighten the world out. Like a union schmendrick from New York in the 1930s, like a... A guy they got out of like a union, a tailor's union. Bernie, you could talk good. You want to get up there on the... No, leave me alone. I'd rather make a pair of pants. No, Bernie, you talk really good. No, I'm not made for politics. Leave me alone. I just want to hem. I want to sit here and I just want to hem the pants. Bernie, come on. You can do it. Say, make him a union. Next thing you know, he's like on a stump and he's a union leader. Next thing you know, look at that. 20,000 people. No, I come to power. Take the, your Wall Street, yo. Take down Wall Street. Tax the rich, yeah, right. He's not going anywhere. In fact, I believe he's a creation of the Hillary Clinton campaign. Otherwise, it would be a Marcy Park job by now. I said it to you before. The reason that they want Bernie to run so far to the left is to make her look like a moderate. So it's like, run, Bernie, run, right? Like she's afraid of him? Are you kidding me? Otherwise, this guy would have had a polonium, a polonium knish by now. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It's not what I want to hear. I want to write a new song with a new group I'm creating called Plutonium Knish. I thought about I look at like rock bands with weird names. I mean, that would be a heck of a group, Plutonium Knish. But I don't know if people know what a knish is. I mean, who knows what a knish is anymore? If I said plutonium hot dog, they'd get it. Plutonium sushi would be better, because that they know. That's what they fed the uh, the Russian journalist in, in London who criticized uh, my hero. <laughs> in case you think I don't know what really is real, okay? I get it. I get the big picture. So I mean, plutonium knish wouldn't work. Plutonium sushi, I can get it. I mean, you may as well have plutonium with what you're t taking your life in your hands anyway, eating sushi with raw fish with pinworms. You shouldn't eat sushi, boys and girls. It's raw fish. We've known for 40 years, at least science has known. 98% of scientists have known, the science is in, that raw fish contains pinworms. I mean, that's a fact. That's science, not what Obama puts out about the, the global uh, bull, bull, baloney. Global, global, baloney. Global globaling. Grovel Gloveling. Oh, do I have a story on that? Wait a minute. Hold it. Don't go away. I'm getting it. Here it is. Back right here. I found this Friday night on Breitbart by James Dellingpole. Climate alarmist caught in largest science scandal in U.S. history. It's some guy from India doing real well over here. He pulled down $60 million in this scam. And his big mistake was not robbing the global warming money, because that they're all doing. No, 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 no. He didn't pony up to the college that gave him the start, because his contract with the college requires he kick back half of what he rakes in. But he was such a greedy slime bag that...
that he sent the money to India to his daughter with another fake foundation where the money went. You hear this? Wait, I'm going to read you the story in a minute. Professor Jagdish Shukla of George Mason University of Virginia. I hope they throw this bum if he's guilty now. I want him to have a proper trial. All people are innocent until proven guilty. But I hope Jagdish is given a fair trial and we get to the bottom of the global warming scam, the biggest scam in the history of the world. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So I was just going through an email chain with someone I respect very much. is very, very, very down on where this is going. And I'm saying, like, there's an article out where these feminist psycho psychos put out a thing that muscles and uh, machismo should be ruled out. It's bad for a boy to have muscles and to want to be strong and be a man. Could you believe how sick these some feminists are? Mentally ill. Destroyed their own minds. Now they want to destroy the minds of the nation. And their hero, of course, is Hillary Clinton. So I, a guy sends me, the, I sent it to him the article about that. The article was The College Fix. It's on my website. And my friend writes back, yep, no guns, muscles, fast cars, big cars, loud music, loud voice, meat and money, all bad. So I say to him, in an email, laugh at the freaks, their time is soon over. He says to me, I don't know how, as they will win the White House and have the new sheeple elect them forever, turn boys to girls and girls to boys and brainwash in schools at age three, drug any masculine boys, destroy military, ban guns and all I mentioned, nothing left, neutered males, females to rule, and then they scream for help when it all comes crashing down. At that point, it is too late. So... I mean, you know, there are people who see it that way, by the way. They're not all, uh, you know, depressed. They see what's going on. They see how psychotic it has become in this country that the military can't win a war against a ragtag bunch of uh, th throat cutters, 7th century throat cutters, who have no air force, no navy, no heavy weapons, and they're still raging across the Middle East because of the metrosexual in the White House who has the mentality of these psychos in plain English. He's obsessed with this. Global warming, the biggest threat to humanity. It's the biggest scam that he ever stumbled upon. I don't want to read the article. Climate alarm is caught in largest science scandal in U.S. history. And uh, this is the jerk who called for RICO statutes to be used against anyone who, who doubted the science on global warming. No one has ever heard anything like this. Climate alarmists who are making fortunes had the nerve to demand that the RICO statute be used, to, used against any scientist or others who say we want to see the evidence and here's other evidence. I never, I never heard of this in my life. This goes back to the Middle Ages to say anyone who has a different opinion should be put in jail. So this guy is raking in a combined income in excess of $800,000 a year, him and his wife. You hear eight hundred grand a year, this fake scientist. Then he gets grant after grant. And uh, it's on global warming, though. And, of course, because he's a third worlder originally, they throw money at him. You know how that works. He must be a genius. He comes from such a sacred society where they put their hands together and bow and they walk in a room, you know. You know. They, they, uh, they were their superior to you. So they look into this guy. 800 grand for him and the wife. She has no degree whatsoever. Then Shukla and his wife received a further $214,000 in compensation from IGES. That's some other shyster group on, on uh, global nonsense. Their combined comp doubled over the next two years to approximately $400,000 for combined comp of over $530,000 by 2004. Shukla's university salary increased dramatically over the decade, reaching $250,000 by 2013 and $314,000 by 2014. Meanwhile, despite the apparent transition of IGES to George Mason University, the income of the Shuklas from IGES continued to increase, reaching $547,000 by 2013. Then they go on, blah, 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 blah. So where are we at this today? Well, the story begins last month when, as reported at Breitbart, 20 alarmist gangsters, led by them, wrote a letter to President O'Shyster, urging him to use RICO laws to crush climate skeptics. Shukla's second big mistake was to send the letter not from his university address, but from his non-profit, the IGES. But his first far bigger mistake was his hubris in organizing the letter in the first place. You see, that drew the attention of 
Shukla's critics to something which, presumably, he would have preferred to keep secret. That for nearly 14 years, he, his family, and his friends have been gorging themselves on taxpayers' money at IGES, and that this money comes on top of the very generous salary he receives for doing much the same work at George Mason University. Now, here's where the trouble begins for him. Under federal law, state employees may not be remunerated for doing work which falls under their state employee remit. And as a professor at, G at GMU, Shukla is de definitely an employee of the state. And the work for which he has most lavishly been rewarding himself at IGES, his private foundation, appears to be remarkably similar to the work he does at GMU as a professor of climate dynamics. Now, if GMU, George Mason University, was aware of these extracurricular payments, then it was in breach of its own policy of financial conflicts of interest in federally funded research. If it wasn't aware of them, then Shukla legally may be required to send half of that $63 million in federal grants to his employer, George Mason University. Do you understand what's going on here, how big this is? Now, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you I kind of knew this was going on. And yes, I'm going to tell you it's all in government zero. Yes, it is. Yes, because I see all. Man sees all. Now, there's a chapter. I'm not going to read it to you now. We'll wait till the book is out. Zero Science, page 226 to 246. And in it, I talk about Lysenkoism then and now, purging scientists who dissent, how real science works, global warming and cooling are natural, inconvenient research, the Vostok ice core samples, where's the warming, and junk journalism for junk science. It's good stuff. Very important that you have it in your library to try and save us before 2016. It's our last shot. It's that simple. I mean, you say, well, you, you know, and you know who you're going to vote for, and you hope Trump wins to get down to the election thing. And if he doesn't, well, you'll take any of the Republicans who would be better than any of the, of the, of the lib socialists. Maybe you're right, maybe not. Rubio is, and Rubio's a shill. Rubio's a puppet on a string owned by people that you can't even imagine. In my opinion, though, Rubio is the worst choice of all. Rubio is more dangerous than Jeb, in my estimation. Rubio is an absolute and total danger to this republic. But I saw that from the get-go. I saw they found an ice cream man in the streets of Miami and made him into a senator, and now they want to make him into president. It's like the movie The Gardener with Peter Sellers in the 60s. This guy has no qualifications whatsoever. What, his name ends in a vowel that makes him a president? Whatever, that, that's my, uh, my opinion. I don't have any strong opinions about Ruby other than the ones I just expressed, but... So we're going to talk about that. Look toward this. I, oh, the evil call. He's back. The guy who I couldn't hear on the cell is back now on the land. So, Bob, on WABC, you'll be the first caller on the Savage Nation today. Go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Savage. I called initially about making a comment about the Russians and the Catholics, but you mentioned something about the dark side. And the Dr. Lucha made it clear to me a while back that the dark side... Wait, sir, wait, Dr. Who? Dr. Lucha out of Chicago. All right, let's make it simple. What is your main point? Let's make it... Uh, give me the summary. The dark side takes you places you never thought you would go. Okay, the dark you, side takes you to places you thought you'd never go, and? And it keeps you there longer than you want to stay. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that, my friend. So what's your experience? I mean, you obviously have a little experience going down that road. Have you been able to come back? I would say, like you... Like everyone, we've all had that dark side where it's taking you there. One of the national things that I see is my good, my good uh, uh, fellow LT, Lawrence Taylor, a dynamic football player. He, who would have ever, he never would have thought that he was going to be caught with a 14, an underage prostitute years later. But the dark side, it puts scales on your eyes. It deafens your hearing. Bob, let me ask you something. Bob, I want to ask you something. Are you speaking through like a synthesizer to change your voice? No, I'm not. Okay, because now you sound clearer. Are you are you a person that people would recognize if we told them your name? Perhaps. Okay, well, that's unimportant. The important thing is you're saying things that are augmenting my primary point from an hour ago uh, about the dark side of people don't, because it was about that Dr. 38 family, three children, dermatologist, great university, 
And she goes out for a night with a friend. She's found two days later naked in a doorway from a, a coke overdose. That's what I was talking about. And I was saying be very careful where you go with yourself.